All right, so welcome to the next part and we will really try to make this beautiful right now. Let me first of all get V-Ray and also let me get GI and let me lose here a brute force pass tracing medium. Let's bring the brute force right up to 128. Color mapping, let's see. Let's bring it maybe to a linear multiply. We could also work here with an, with an Reinhardt for exteriors, which can sometimes help in the color mapping. Those color ma mapping methods basically all have a little bit of a different response to light, um, of course. Um, the biggest difference is here, I mean, normally I would really only work with linear multiply or with Reinhardt. Reinhardt gives you here different values. You have here then a burn value and a multiplier as well. This burn value is basically when a sunlight or let's say a really strong light, maybe let's, you have seen this probably, when you go out on a really, really sunny day and the sun reflects extremely hard on a, on a car paint material or something like that, you get those really, really burnt, it's really over bright and you get those burnt out areas. So a burn value of one is basically realistic, but in some renderings it can just simply look unrealistic because it's just simply too burned out. And then we have the possibility to go down here with the burn value, maybe to something like 0.6 and get rid a little bit of this burned out area. Um, let's start out with linear multiply and let's see what we get. Maybe this is just fine for us. Anti-aliasing, I would go here, max subdivisions 10, threshold for the first time, maybe 0.03 and... Anything else we need to check here before we do anything? I don't think so. Let's hit Control D. Let's make sure that linear workflow is ticked off here. And let's make a simple test render here with V-Ray. And let's see if we get anything. Right now, everything is black. Um, so I think we can just simply... Because I have some problems today with V-Ray. I have no clue what is going on, to be honest. So what we... Could, I mean, let me try first of all if it's working now or not. Let's give this a physical camera. If not, this will be the Octane part. And I have to wait to, to fix V-Ray before I can make the V-Ray part as well. Um, and let's drop in a light. Area light. Let's give it... Let's just simply see if we get now anything here. A little bit something maybe. Let, let me give the camera for sure a protection tag. So I'm not moving this camera around um, somehow. And let's take this light here and bring it up. Let's turn it like this. So it's looking down. And let's bring it a little bit over here. And let me give it a weary light tag as well. Come on, enable shadows. No decay, let me up this here to 128. And let's, let's just leave this as a rectangle right now. I just want to know if we is eliminating any light right here, right now. It's still extremely dark. Yeah, okay, there's coming something. Let's see if we change this here to watts and go maybe here to 50. Let's see if we get anything. Not really. Now v is completely messing up and I have no clue what, what is going on today. It just simply turns everything almost completely black and there is something wrong. I think I have to reinstall the re even so to get here now a little bit of light. This should be way brighter here, all the areas. I mean, let's maybe change this here to 2000. This would be so bright that our eyes probably pop out and... Okay, maybe it does work. Now we're getting really something here. Okay, so let me, let me try to set this really really up like I wanted it to have. Let's go with an HDRI first of all. Let's drop here default image maybe to 1. And let me check here a little bit something. Is here everything right? Gloss effects, yes, on the fly, OpenGL. Da, 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 da. Okay, it looks all good, I think. And let's just change this to an area, uh, it was an area light, and uh, let's change this here to dome. Um, spherical dome use texture and I will try to find now a nice HDRI that fits this scene somehow. So I think I will just go here with somehow some overcast HDRI and we will try... I mean you basically can take every HDRI that you want um, but basically an exterior HDRI would be really good so really an HDRI that has been shot outside um, 
And this value here, the intensity, really depends on the HGRI. Sometimes a value of 1, while intensity units is set to default image, can be extremely bright or way too bright for the shot already. And sometimes it can be just way too low. This really, really depends on um, the HDRI a lot. Let me bring this here. Uh, first of all, let me rotate this HDRI here a little bit. So it's really standing like this. And then we bring this up here a little bit more. Maybe like this. And let's go up with the... No, maybe let's make another test render. I really don't know why, why we is working now and didn't before. So right now, I think, as you can see, we get here a little bit of low light in the scene. I mean, we, don't, we didn't have, we didn't change the camera yet, so let's first of all set up the camera tag. Let's hear neutral response. As you might have guessed, we're adding effects off because we can do this in post work. Film ISO for exterior, probably not higher than 400 because we're getting a lot of light. If I go here with the f-stop now 2.8 and shutter speed maybe 100, we will probably be way too bright already but i also might want to set up a little bit of a dof even thought here in this picture you probably don't get one so good and as you can see way too bright so we need to change down here the intensity maybe to 0.1 in the hdri and leave the camera like this once i have set up my camera most of the time i'm not playing around with any other values anymore because i think it's just simply not not necessary so I think this already looks not so bad. We're getting a lot of light, even so it's, it's an, basically an overcast day, as you can see. So it's really, really overcast here. Uh, we don't getting any sun or anything like this. So we have a lot of clouds in the sky, uh, which is not which is not a bad thing. I think it's uh, pretty pretty cool. And I think we can just simply start to texture this now. Let's first of all save this file separately. Let me do this quickly. Okay, did just save my file. Um, you don't have to watch this, otherwise this lesson will just take too long for unnecessary reasons. And we can make our first material. And first of all, we can jump to our main texture source. So the site is called textures.com. Uh, before it was called cgtextures.com. And we can download here all kind of nice textures. They really have a, a ton of different materials and right now we're, we're searching for a concrete material maybe something like this concrete new here so let's click this and maybe maybe something like this would look cool on this wall i think it would look cool for sure i mean i have seen a building like this and i already know okay that this will probably look look okay so i'm not trying to make a secret out of it i'm just looking which map would be really good but first of all we need to log in so you have to create your own account there because i can't give you those maps those maps just simply belong to textures.com but you can download 15 megabytes for free and we will never uh, extend here um uh, our free 15 megabytes uh at least not in one day or in one tutorial so you can definitely download all the maps that we need for this project easily without having to pay anything extra Okay, right, so I'm logged in and I think, I mean, this is seamless. A seamless texture is always good because seamless means we can repeat this uh, texture endlessly without having, having to worry about anything or any, any problems because this map is just so perfectly cut that as soon as it repeats itself, it will just look completely normal again. So we're not getting any troubles. So let's download this and let's load this texture. Um, let's go diffuse layer, load image, and let's go work E, uh, zero to hero, or at, at least I go there, and load this concrete texture here, first of all, and let's drop this, let's also load it in a Cinema 4D shader, in the color channel, load image, so we can see a little bit better where this is, let's drop it onto our building. And let's see where this is located. So let's go options, textures ticked on. So we can see what's going on. Let's tick off the light if we still see nothing. And let's jump out of the camera and see what we get. This looks right now all over the place as you can see. We have here some pretty good ruined UV maps. So we have to change this here to cubic. And this is now way too small. As you can see, this is way, way, way too small. 
So we need to make this bigger. Let's maybe go 600, 600. We might even have to get way higher. Maybe this looks already... Yeah, doesn't look too shabby. Let's maybe just play around with the offset a little bit. Uh, maybe like this. Okay, alright. Now maybe not alright. Let's maybe make this a little bit bigger here. Like this. Let's maybe make it 800. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's hard to say. Hard to say right now. Where to go. <laughs> because I want to have those points. Can you see that? Under, under those windows. I really want to have them all in place. And right now this one is perfectly in the middle. Which which I like. Here not. And here they're not even visible anymore. This kind of looks, looks not so good. I think. Let's maybe just try to get rid of all the points on all under the windows. So let's just simply take the exact same settings that I have here. So 903% right here. Let's maybe even a little bit more. I mean, this might look a little bit crazy. Let's go 886. Because we can't scale it too much in the Y direction only. Otherwise, the points will look kind of scary. And let's maybe bring this a little bit down here. No, uh, now I'm getting here points again by the windows, which I don't like. But I also need to look that those points are not exactly on the edge, so this is kind of hard to do right now. Yeah, maybe like this. I think now here we can work with some points, that's okay. And here it now also looks fine. Okay, so let's jump back into the camera. Let's overwrite this with our V-Ray material. Let's enable the light back on, save the file, and let's make a test render. A pretty quick one and let's see what we get I mean we didn't tweak the shader uh, in any way yet but I just want to see how those map looks right now maybe it looks a little bit scaled out but I think we can work with it I think we can work with it maybe we have to go a little bit yeah I think we have to go down to 600% and just work with this otherwise it otherwise I think it just simply doesn't look good good enough and here I think we can, we just have to play with the offset till we find a spot where really all the points are hidden, almost. Yeah, like this maybe. Maybe like this. No. Maybe like this. Yes. Yeah, I think that's fine like that. Let's look here on the top. Okay, the top is absolutely not perfect. Yeah, like, that's maybe really like this okay uh, those points I don't like let's go a little bit down oh my man okay yeah okay, okay. I think we can leave it like this so 600 600 and in the offset we 183 percent and let's jump back in and let's see if this looks now a little bit better first of all I want to save my file I always just simply click file save before I'm rendering something because as soon as you start up a rendering you always have this 0.01% risk or chance that something is crashing and then you're pretty much uh, not cool and uh, yeah it's not cool it's really not cool and as you can see we're getting a little bit of an issue uh, our floor is coming through the wall here a little bit so there is this is what I think we should we should change first. Um, so we might need to. Um, I mean, we could try one thing. We could try secondary ray bias inside of V-Ray. This can sometimes help when the geometry is a little bit overlapped. We can just simply bring this value here up, maybe to O point. I'm not even sure what the good value is here right now. Let's maybe bring it up to O point one for now. And let's see what we get. I just want to see if this helps. If not, we just simply have to make the floor a little bit smaller. Yeah, it didn't help. Didn't really help. No, not at all. Okay. Um, so let's change the secondary re bias back again. And let's maybe those. Let's see. here we have the floors. Let's just. Go to the scaling tool and scale them just a little bit in. But as soon as we start scaling, we're getting here a percentage 
uh, thingy, can you see? The percentage here in the scene? And let's just simply bring it down to... Um, 101.2%, but then it comes out... What the hell? I did just scale it in the, in the wrong direction. Maybe we have to do this for each floor individually. So let's go object mode. Make sure that the axis is in place. So let's go match axis center, center, axis 2. Mm, and let's scale this in here, one by the one. No, it's not working like that. And the axis is not really centered to the object whatsoever. So what can we do? Okay, what we can do is we select those things here. Sometimes I just simply have to have to think about all this stuff. Select this here, go to coordinates. Let's select all four of these and let's then just simply go down here with the scale in all directions. 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. But this will bring out our floor a little bit, which is also not good. Okay. So the last thing that we could do is we just get rid of our building. Go poly mode, go select loop selection. And skill is it? No, that's also not working. Now let's maybe go extrude. Can we extrude this in at least? No, that's not working like that. What I'm what I'm, what I'm thinking now? How can I make this smaller? Let's go. Hmm. How can I make? I mean, I could just simply make the building bigger. This would also work probably. Let's make the building a little bit, just a tiny little bit bigger, in the x and in the set axis. So we go here x one point oh one. And then the set 0.01. And if we're lucky enough, we get rid now of our floor problem. I really hope that was it. No, still there. Okay, let's go bigger. Let's go maybe 1.05 and 1.05 in the set as well. No. This brings my floor even more out. This is not working like this. I'm thinking just completely wrong. Today, I really wanna just don't see my floor anymore, to be honest. So I think I will just move it a little bit. Not even moving will help. I need to make this smaller somehow. Right now, let me get rid of the building. How can I make you smaller? And this is why I really leave the videos on so that you just... I mean, probably there is such an easy solution right now, but I, I just can't seem to find it. So, um, yeah, you have to stay with me till I find a nice solution here. What could I do? Bridge, no. Extrude inner, no. Align, array, clone, collapse, no, 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 no. Let me jump into edge mode, so we're getting a few new buttons here. Melt, optimize, split, bridge, connect point, edges, polygon pen. Polygon pen is, by the way, also a really good modeling tool if you want to check it out. Um, spin edge, no. Slide, maybe, but slide is just, no. It's not working here. What could I really do? What could I do? Can I just select the points and then scaling behaves some... No, it doesn't. It's just... It's not scaling correct because this thing, so the, the axis is just simply not on the object. And it's also a crazy object, of course. That's, that's for sure. Uh, let me just... Let me try to pull this out of the null. Maybe it's working better then and go mesh. X is centered to yeah. Cinema for the think thinks it is centered right now. Let me bring the axis on my own over here. Let me see if this helps with scaling now. Yeah, not really. This is just. I will just pause the video here and find a solution in the meanwhile. Okay, the problem here is really with scaling. This is just simply not working because as soon as I make it smaller. It's on the left side of the building, it's then okay, but on the right side, of course, this is coming out. So no matter how I scale this, this will always be kind of fucked up. So we will just simply delete this here now. And 
Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Make this by hand. We need to make this by hand. So let's go select loop selection. Go into edge mode. Let's make sure that we only select those edges here that are really important for us. Exactly. This one. Uh, come on. Yes, perfect. And let's make a slide here, but this time we go clone. So we clone this slide somehow, which is also not working, which is really, really bad. Hmm. Proportional will probably not make a difference here. So this is also not working. So now I'm really... Tr this is kind of hard. I don't know. This is not really taking... How can I fix this problem? Maybe should I just select the polygons here? Which I'm not able to do anymore. Ah, because I'm in axis mode probably. Okay. Then, what can I do? Yeah, I can make an extrude inner. This is probably working. So let's select all those polygons and let's make an extrude inner. Extrude inner. And let's go preserve groups this time. And let's bring it in like this. Maybe not so much, maybe just a little bit. Okay, perfect. And now we go select uh, invert and now we can delete this away like this doesn't even matter if the floor is open here or not we can try to fix this with close polygon but I don't think this will work here because this object is just way too big I mean okay we, we could fix it first of all I wanna check if this still looks okay now when I enable my building if I see anything from my floor it shouldn't Maybe here I see a little bit something sticking out, but I hope that's okay. Let's say I hope this is not sticking out. Uh, sometimes you see geometry, yeah, we don't, oh, do we? I need a second camera here, which I can fly around in the scene with. And let's check this here again. Let's go a little bit up closer. I don't want to have any unnecessary geometry in my in my scene that we are not allowed to see really no I think it's okay I think it's not there I think this is from the t this is coming from the texture the dirt that we have here I mean even so this looks hmm, not 100% sure here is it coming through or is it not no it's not it's definitely not coming through no okay it only looks from this perspective like this sometimes okay so let's get rid of the building and let's fix this one cube here quickly so it looks, I don't know, kind of okay. Let's go first of all, uh, Control A, optimize. And then we just take the bridge tool. Let's get rid of the light so we can see a little bit better. And let's bridge this here together quickly. Yeah. We could also just delete the upper, upper thing here and then extrude again. I mean, we could do this as well doesn't matter which way we go if you're fast with bridging do it like this if you are fast with deleting polygons and then extruding again then it's fine as well i'm just doing it like this right now i don't think it really matters time wise not not a lot for sure uh, okay okay okie dokie perfect and here we need another one okay so now this should be fixed. That's good. Now we need to duplicate our flow again. So let's jump into this view here. And let's duplicate this cube, bring it down like... Oh, let's enable the building again. So I can see it a little bit better here. Yeah, let's bring it down to here. Next one. Very good. And the next one. Let's bring it down like this. Okay, and this should be good enough, and let's call this uh, group objects and call this 
slower floors. Let's just simply call this floors, that's okay. Uh, ground plane is enabled. Okay, so let's switch back to, to our perspective mode. Back into our camera. Let's say, let's call this camera here final shot. And let's call this camera here fly around. And let's tick on the light and let's make a really quick render and I will show it to you when it's finished. Okay, so this is how it looks right now. Um, I think looks a little bit awkward right now because we didn't do anything with the shaders and so on and so on but overall i think the lighting situation is, is pretty good and i like it maybe we can go a little bit darker later on but first of all what i want to do is we need to create somehow a little bit of a bump map because without bump mapping this will really look awful so we'll copy this channel here from our diffuse layer let me delete this here and let's call this uh, concrete wall first of all and we copy from the diffuse layer the map that we loaded, copy channel, and bring it into the bump. Let's enable the bump as well, paste channel. And we will try to make a little bit of a bump map without Photoshop, just with a simple colorizer to get this done. So let's bring the colorizer over this. Or let's just simply click on colorizer and let's see how this does look. Let's make the map a little bit bigger. As you can see, the holes are already getting black, which is good. Let's just bring the blacks a little bit more in. And now we bring the whites a little bit more in. Yeah, and as you can see, we're already getting some nice bump map here, just with black and white values, which is good. And let's maybe bump this up to 3 centimeters. Let's maybe make it even 5 centimeters for now. And then we can minus 5 in this case. And then we can look at this shader a little bit and see what it looks like. So we're getting those nice holes and a little bit here. We're also getting a little bit of depth, which is good. And I think we need to turn on a specular layer. And let's maybe go here with a value of maybe 2.8. So a little bit of a higher IOR, but with the reflection glossiness, we go really, really down low. And I think this will give us a relatively good uh, concrete material uh, because Concrete is really, it is reflective somehow, uh, but not really strong. So I think that the IOR is kind of a little bit higher, but we will see this in, in the final rendering anyway. Let's maybe go here 0. Point. I think we should also load this bump map that we just made also and use this here as a glossiness map that I showed you before in the advanced tutorial for V-Ray. So I think I will go here a little bit more back so I have a little bit more of different black and white values and gray values to play with so I think we can leave it like that and I will just say okay where it's black I will want to have a value maybe of I don't know uh, 48 and where it's really white I want to have a value maybe of 58 or 59 so we're getting something like this if this material now really will hold up or if it will look really good we will see in a minute uh, but then we if it does not, we just simply have to play around a little bit with the values. And let me give this glossiness subdivisions here 64, like, right away. And let's make a test render. Let's see what we get, basically. How this material works with the scene and with the overall lighting. And we're definitely getting a lot more detail in now than before, that's for sure. And it will not look so, so flat anymore. Um... I should also have enabled, I think we have a, a, some noise in there now. As you can see here, we're already getting a little bit of a strong, too strong reflection here for concrete. That's not really good, I think. Here you can see the difference. I mean, maybe if it was a rainy day and, uh, and uh, um, the concrete is still a little bit wet, then we might get somehow a little bit of those reflections. But I think it's just it's just way too hard now. So, I basically think we have to go down here a little bit. Let's maybe we have also... Maybe we should also go down a little bit with the bump, maybe. Or maybe not. I think the bump might be okay. We just have to go down with the... Uh, with the IOR here. Let's maybe go down to something like 2. Yeah, this will give us way less reflection here, or less way... Hmm, how can I say that? Less less lighting on the wall, so 
the material now basically just simply doesn't pick up so much uh, so much from its surroundings. Let's just let's see the difference. I think this edge here is really important for us to really tell the difference between the last shot. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, now it looks way better than before. As you can see here, it was really too over glossy. Right now, I think we're starting to to getting a little bit uh, somewhere here. Still looks kind of wet, but uh, but I like it to be honest. I, I think it looks good. Uh, we might, if we don't want to have it so wet, we could still go down maybe to 1.8, 1.6. But for now, I think I really like it. You can do it on your own. You can go down a little bit, maybe, like I said, to 1.8, 1.6. This might be good. Um, but yeah, for now, I think it's really, really okay. Okay, and let's build our windows. Let's go create shader VR bridge advanced material. And let's bring in here somehow um, a glass material. So let's take off the diffuse layer, refraction layer, specular layer on. 1.6 is, I think, just fine. Fresh layer, reflection glossiness, I would go 0.99. And the specular layer would also go here, 0.99 reflection glossiness, which it already is. And let's make it 64 glossy subdivisions and maybe also 64 glossy subdivisions here. Um, I think this will make a pretty good glass material. Maybe we need to make this a little bit... Go a little bit more down with the IOR or with the reflection glossiness, but we will see this in a minute. And let's just drop this on our building. And here in the selection, we just take the selection tag that we created before in the modeling part. So that only our windows are selected. And let's render this again. And let's see what we get. This should instantly overwrite. Because here, as you can see, this shot, the windows were also did also have this concrete material. This should now be completely gone and we should get some windows here which we do which i like <laughs> of course i like this um, this is exactly what should happen here okay yeah looking pretty good we might want to give the windows also just a little bit of a small noise and a little bit of a small bump because if you look at the window normally you don't get this perfect 100% reflection, you know what I mean? So it's kind of a little bit blurry. So I think maybe even 0.99 is a little bit too much for window. So there, and also the glass is normally a little bit distorted. So we can give it a little bit of a small bump, this material, to make it not look so absolutely, to make this glass not look so absolutely perfect, you know? But because this can also distract somehow the viewer a little bit. But I mean, here we still have a little bit of noise in the picture. And it's not reflecting so hard right now, so I think we might can get away with those settings. But we can also try to add, like I said, a little bit of noise. But I think it looks okay. I think it looks okay. We, we might can get away with this. The next thing that I want to texture, I think, are those plates here. We need to come up here with somehow some material. Uh, which is not concrete, I think, because this wouldn't really make much sense. I mean, we could go with all kind of materials. Uh, we could go with wood. We could go with... Um, we could also go with glass, of course, here as well. Uh, maybe some kind, somehow, some some frosted glass. This might look cool. We might could go with some frosted glass. This might really look nice. Might look nice. And here, I think I still... This gets a little bit too reflective here. This is not something that I really like. Also, the, here we can see the texture extremely, uh, which is not so good. It still picks up. Now maybe the light is okay. Maybe the, the, the light that it picks up is okay for now. We can still change this in the end if we want to. Okay. And let's maybe create some frosted glass for this. We could also go with a little bit of color. Uh, let's try it. Just control, drag and drop. And let's call this here frosted glass. And the only thing we have to do here for frosted glass is uh, basically go down here in the refraction layer uh, with the glossiness. So if you change this here down maybe to 0.8 or something like this, this should already become somehow 
some frosted glass, as you can see, still loading. Frosted glass will definitely take some time to render. So let's maybe bring this even down to 0.7. I'm over 0.75 maybe. And so yeah, this will definitely take some, some render time here. And we could also think about if you want to mix in here in a fraction color, a color or not. Should we bring in some color into this picture? Maybe greenish, bluish, brownish, what do I know? Or should we just try to go with some kind of wood here from textures.com? Maybe fine wood, something like this. Maybe such wood planks or maybe... Well, I'm not. I'm not even sure if this would look good. I mean, we could try it. Of course, we could try it. Hmm. I mean, in the end, we are the designer now, so we can decide. If we're working for a client, we probably know exactly what kind of texture we are looking for. Um, in this case, it's really up to us. Let's just drop this here onto our plates, and let's make a quick test render. I mean, quick. Probably takes now a little bit because of this frosted glass. So quick is really a term that we uh, should soon forget about. The thing is that we also see the cylinder in the back of this thing. Probably even though it's frosted, we might still see it. So we might have to make this kind of metallic. We could also come up here with a metallic material, of course. Maybe some silverish, little bit of reflective material. Might not look too shady as well. And as you can see, V-Rays now really working on this first plate already. Normal windows is not such a problem, but as soon as the reflection gets also a little bit blurry, V-Ray definitely takes some time to render this. Doesn't even look too bad, I think. No, I think it has something. We could also use some kind of an exit color here, so that the... Uh, um, um, window gets only here, everywhere this geometry gets e exited. I'm not sure if this word really exists in, in English, but then we could make this here green or red or something like that. Maybe red looks good. Let me try this quickly, or let me show you this quickly. So, I think I showed you this before in some lesson, but I'm not 100% sure right now. Let me just show you this quickly. So this was my having fun with interiors shot, an interior that I did, I don't know, I think like two, three, four years ago. And here you can see this exit color of the glass. So basically we get on the edge a different color than the normal glass has. So we can make this here happen if we go here frosted and then go in the refraction layer, refract exit color. I think I have to put it into the refract exit color. Let's go really really red here for now. I think this might look really nice if we go here somehow darker red maybe something like this. So in the RGB in the R199 and GNB0 of course and then we have to tick on use exit color as well and let's maybe save this file and let's just make a quick test render. I haven't done this in a while so I'm not 100% sure which one of those two uh, color thing is it really is uh, to, to put the color in but it might have been the right one straight away mm. nope that was the wrong one because now the glass really looks kind of red so that was not what was you looking for uh, so let's make this black again and let's try it here with 199 in the reflect exit color and Let's render again and let's see what we get here. I really want to have such, maybe such really r red, red edges. Yeah, now we're getting something. Yes, yes. But this also turns the rest of the glass kind of red, which I don't like. Maybe it's just too much. Mm. Yeah, I think we just have too hard color here going on. Uh, maybe we just go down here to something like this. Uh, let me check this again here. Mm. Uh, I think we have to even go darker. Miri seems to handle this kind of uh, crazy, to be honest. Let's maybe go 17 here. 
Now it's already turning black almost. So let's see this again. This is just really trying, 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 trying to see what we get. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting really somehow nice red edges and the rest of the glass stays the same. In a final rendering this will even look better, I guess. It kind of looks weird as well, I think. Here, down here is maybe where it gets hit by the light, it might look crazy. Yeah, let's maybe... I mean, let's leave it on for now, but we can change it later on if you really want to. Um, yeah, that's that's not something that we need to change now. What I want to create is definitely somehow a um, silver material behind those glass for our cylinders that we did use. So let's go uh, diffuse layer, turn this completely black. Go maybe 10 here in the IOR, specular layer. Reflection glossiness I want to turn down a little bit, so maybe 0 0.75 or something like that. So it's not that glossy, and we just simply pull this on our cylinders. Um, yeah, on our null object, this should be fine as well. And let me create one more normal material. And let me just simply bring this here to 100% brightness and the color. I want to bring exactly to 50% in the V. So we get 50% gray here, which is always a good value. And let's just drop this onto our floors that we have on the inside and also on our ground plane. So this has some material to reflect some light as well. And let's make a full render. I just want to see how the glass looks now. That we, our frosted glass looks now in a final rendering. Might green look a little bit better, huh? I mean, this is really a design thing. This is really, I mean, this is, color is like really always something that you can discuss for hours. So I don't know, is this color fitting? Is it okay? Uh, I mean, if you were an architect now and you would build something like this, really the question, okay, does it look good? Does it not look good? Is it okay? I'm not sure. I think a, greener ex a green exit color would look better maybe here. Maybe with red it was really kind of... Um, was not such a good idea. Anyway, I will just let this render finish and show it to you as soon yeah, as it has finished. Okay, so this is what we get for now. I think this is still way too glossy and not frosted enough. Maybe this was also my mistake here. And I'm not sure if these edges are really beveled around the windows. And yeah, a few of other things. I don't know what there is happening on the left side. There's this gray streak. I just have to look at this here a little bit closer if there is something going on that I haven't recognized before. Uh, yeah, the floor is coming through here. That's perfect. So we have to take our... I will just simply select the floor here now. Let me get rid of the light so you can see this better. As you can see here, the floor is coming through again. So we need just to select this here. And I will just select those polygons for now. And push them back. Because other, all the other things would just be too much work now. So let's do the exact same thing here. Select this. Push this back. Go down here. Oh, we could also push this down a little bit because it's not aligned good, this floor here. Even so, it doesn't really matter. But I think we should still do this. Just searching for the handle here. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's good enough. It's okay. Let's select this. Let's bring this in. Okay. And let's do the same thing down here. That's really not good when this is coming through. Okay, perfect. Now it should be gone. Let's check the other side as well here. Yeah, exact same thing on this side, of course. Of course. And let's select this here. And uh, bring this in. Do the exact same thing with the next floor. And here we go. Here we go again. And the last one. 
and we have fixed this. The next thing that we want to fix is the frosted glass. So we might need to do this a little bit better, even though it's already a little bit frosted, but I think I have to go down more in the fraction layer, maybe to 0.65. And let's also go down here in the speculum layer with the glossiness, maybe to something like 0.65 as well. Then we should get real, real frosted material here. Yep, Reno. Okay, and let's make another test render and let's see what we get now. And let me also change the change the exit color because I don't really like the exit color now. To be honest, we 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 just should go for a different color here. I think I will go somehow somehow greenish, maybe like this. Yeah, maybe like this. Okay, perfect. And let's render this again and let's see how this looks. If we can't get away really with this frosted glass look and we think, okay, this doesn't really look appealing to us whatsoever, we could just try to um, make, make here maybe some metal instead of glass. And right now this already looks some kind of weird, I think. Let me check this in the viewport before making a full render because there's something already happening that I don't like. Uh, what is going on here? What is going on? What did I do now? Now it's not a complete thing is turning green again. Which should not be our, our thing. Maybe also because those things are beveled, we really can't really find um, a good exit color. Hmm. Maybe let's get rid of the exit color for now. I will I will check this out later on. We can make this shortly before we're doing a, a, a final render. So let's just simply go with a normal glass and let me check here those edges before I forget it. They're not beveled, right? No, they're not beveled. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so that they are not beveled. Let's turn off the light. Let's go uh, turn off the textures for now and let's bevel those windows. So we're getting here a little bit of extra reflections as well. Because otherwise this will just look too... Yeah, we're not getting any reflections there. That's just not, that's just not right. That's not, that's not good. It doesn't look good in the rendering. I can show you then a little bit uh, uh, the difference, of course, to the other renderings that we did without the bevel here. And then you will see for yourself that it definitely has some kind of impact. So once the video is fine, let's just go new transform. And let's jump back and now let's make another full render. I will show it to you as soon as it has finished. Okay, in this rendering there's now something wrong with our glass. Um, as you can see there's, I don't know, if you look at this, the windows are completely dark and, and perfect as they should be. But right now they are completely over bright. So I think while I was beveling those windows, I might still have had selected something. So let's go back here before I did the bevel and let's see which edges are exactly selected. Let's see if we have anywhere else. Yeah, as you can see, we have this edge here selected on the inside. I mean, that is is that should not really should be bothering us because it has nothing to do with the window whatsoever. But there is something going on, something crazy going on. Let me try this once again. Let me just make a render region here for those two windows. Let me see how this looks. Let me turn on the light first of all. And then we'll make the bevel again and then we'll check again what's going on. They're still over bright now. Why why they are behaving like that like this now? Hmm. This is really kind of crazy. Why would it... I mean, before it was kind of okay. Oh. oh. I think I did change here something. Oh, did I? Did I change something in the wrong material? No. Should still look okay. I don't get it. Selected, selection tag is on it. 
frosted glass we have on our plates. What is going on? Uh, trace that you could also set to 5 here. Did I change something with the tree stepped? No. That's weird. That's really, really weird. Before everything was fine and now we're getting somehow some crazy reflections here in our windows. Which I can't understand where they're coming from now. I really have no clue. Maybe it's a V-Ray v -ray problem. Might have to restart Cinema 4D and then look it up again. But if it's not, I'm losing all my undo options that I have still available now. If I did something, if it was my mistake somehow. Yes, almost looks now like a mirror or something. I just don't get it. I didn't move the camera, I didn't do anything else than before. This is kind of crazy. Okay, we'll just pause the video here and see what the what what really the problem is. Okay, it seems like the normals got flipped somehow uh, when we beveled this. So all you have to do is just to simply click on the front side here of the window, then holding down shift, select all of those, and then go reverse normals again till they turn orange here on the front side and on the back side. They should still be blue and this was exactly the problem right now this is why the reflection did look so weird so let's try to make our bevel once again this should still be selected let's go bevel and new transform and let's look at our windows again if this cha did change now somehow yeah it did once again the same thing okay so it did change our normals so we go reverse normals here Let's look at this. Okay, everything is orange. Everything is blue on the inside. Perfect. So now it should work. Let's jump in our camera and let's make a full render. And then now also our windows should look normal again. Yes, they do. Perfect. Okay, so let me finish this render. Okay, so this is what the render looks right now. We might have to change this frosted class just because I don't think the look is so great and we also still have to play a little bit with this map here because here you can see this point. Here, uh, these holes are just way too close here to the window. So we still have to move them a little bit around. Um, another thing that I can see, I can still see my floor here, which is kind of crazy because we should not be able to see this anymore. But it's still possible to see this floor. Uh, it's like I maybe I did go back so much that the floor is now still there, which might be a problem. Yes, it is, of course. This is not so good. So I will save this now and uh, don't record this. I will just simply move the floor back. Okay, and the other thing that I wanna uh, change a little bit because if if we look at this, this kind of looks a little bit too clean. And let's say this building is maybe up for one or two years. We should get a little bit something more dirt in here because just of the of the rain and all and the sun and all the things that are going down that of course also will have some impact on our concrete um so what we can do we can jump into concrete and there's an easy solution inside of v-ray which is just simply called v-ray dirt so we can add some dirt with this so let's click here on use v-ray dirt and then we can um load here First of all, before we do this, we should copy our map because this map gets overwritten then. Let's go copy channel and then use v dirt. And then we have an occluded color and an unoccluded color. So one is there for our dirt. The other thing we can use for our, um, for our map that we did use before. So let's go unoccluded color and paste this channel in. And occluded color will be our dirt. So let's just simply add for now maybe a color. And let's make it red and let's see where we would have in the scene our dirt for now with a radius of 100 and distribution of all of and subdivisions um, this all has kind of an impact of course how our dirt will look like and how much dirt we will get so we'll just make here normally we should only get dirt on edges this is just how v-ray considers this so it tries to find somehow edges in the scene and then 
uh, applies the dirt to it because the most dirt is most of the time of the edges because this is where the water is dripping down and this is where um, yeah simply where the water is dripping down most of most uh, most of the time so as you can see here we would start to get already our dirt but I think the radius is just way too big because we wouldn't get I mean we would get somehow a little bit of a dirt but not so much I think so what we can do is we can go down with the radius maybe let's half make it half let's make it 50 let's see how much dirt we get now yeah still might be too much i think let's go down maybe to 10. the windows are also really really important here that the dirt doesn't go in so much right to the to the glass material itself and with 10 yeah we're getting somehow some dirt which looks okay i think Okay, right, sorry, I just got a, a little phone call here. Um, as you can see, with 10, it's kind of, it's it's good. It's really, really good. The problem is that it's exactly not where we want to have the dirt because the dirt would not spawn here on the inside and also not here on the inside. It would spawn on the outside because this is where really the rain is is uh, falling down and is running, uh, is running down. So what we can do, we can jump in into our material and in the very dirt, we can just simply say, invert normals and now this complete thing should be inverted so let's render this let's make a quick test render here again and then we should see how we should get the dirt on the outer edges where we really want to have it of course so as you can see now we're getting some nice dirt around the edges here and now we can instead of this red map we can load i don't know just a simple color we could load um our own texture map if we want to um, let's maybe look off on this side a little bit uh, something like no, we don't really need soil we need really something dirty let's maybe let's just search for dirt here and let's see what we get maybe something yeah exactly something like this might look look okay um, so let's download this map here and let's load this map let's maybe first of all make the radius a little bit bigger let's maybe make this radius 20 and distribution i mean let let me show this quickly as well here on this original chaos group so we re homepage we can see a little bit better what all those parameters do um so here the radius you have seen that already um then here the distribution was it what the distribution does exactly um, then the fall off so a fall off of one which we have right now we don't have so much fall off so uh, fall off of five is a lot more of course than this what the subdivisions do and uh, what the bias does in the x y and z axis so you can just simply read this through here a little bit because there are a lot of nice pictures and it's just simply um, self-explaining so i think there, it's not really necessary that I explain every single thing when you can just simply read it really more effectively on this side what all those parameters are really doing in Word I just showed you normally you really only need this and fall off we could maybe make let's go three fall off I want to have a little bit of a stronger fall off but I also want to have a little bit of more dirt so let's look how this yeah how this looks now with those parameters so with 20 20 in the dirt and with a little bit of fall off i think this looks a little bit better now so getting really some nice dirt maybe i should even make the radius a little bit higher the only thing that i don't like which is really dirt doing right now that's also here on this edge we're getting a little bit of dirt and here we are not getting so much which is kind of crazy I think we have to go higher now with the with the radius since we did put in a fall off as well so let's maybe go with 50 here let's maybe go even with 60 and let's see how much we get because if we're using this texture here um sorry if you're using this texture here um i think we need a little bit more space 
Let's maybe also search for a different texture as well. With a little bit a different dirt, maybe a little bit more greenish. Even thought we could make this in Photoshop happen anyway. Yeah, maybe something. Ah, oh, this is looking good. This is looking pretty amazing. Where was it? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I like this. I like this one. Let's download this one. I think that's good. Okay, and now we're starting really to getting some dirt here as well, which I really, really like. Um, is there still a little bit... I think there's still the floor coming through a little bit, right? Because otherwise, why would we really try to make here some dirt? I mean, maybe I don't see any floor, to be honest, so... Might be okay. Maybe just because we did some cutting here. Can't really tell right now. Okay, well, anyway, let's just simply load now a dirt map instead of this red color here. And let's see how this map will react. So I just loaded this uh, green map here now. And uh, yeah, this should be an alpha PNG. Let's just see what we get now. I'm really... Let's surprise ourselves how this looks like with a little bit more dirt here. Let's see if this map works kind of good here. Hmm. Yeah, we're definitely getting here some, some dirt from the map, which looks kind of cool, I think. Down here something crazy is happening, I have no clue what it, what it is. And here around the windows we're getting this uh, white thing a little bit. So the map is not perfect yet. I mean, what we could do is just simply, instead of this map, we could also just load a color and make it kind of uh, greenish maybe something like this so here in the RGMP you can see the values and let's see what we get here and if not we would just simply need to try out different and different dirt maps till we find something that is really looking kind of appealing and also kind of good for us of course but this turns here a little bit of green here on the edges. Uh, it's just too much. We also would need more subdivisions, I think. Uh, yeah, that's definitely too much. Let's load a map again. This time I load the other dirt map. Um, I think that's better. It's also alpha masked. Okay, and let's maybe up the subdivisions here to 32. So that this thing doesn't look so spread anymore. And let's look at the windows first of all and see what we get there. Okay, now we're getting these really, really dark areas. Doesn't look too good right now. Maybe we should go back with the radius here. So maybe 20. And let's try again what we get. Because there are a lot of parts are really dirty that I don't want to have dirty and it doesn't look good it doesn't really look good maybe with a radius of 20 at this map we can get away pretty good yeah now we're getting some nice dirt here around the edges here it's even a little bit of white which can be okay because I don't know it's just simply overused here the concrete whatsoever this might be just fine and if we still run into more problems or if anything doesn't look too good we can still change uh, the dirt map later on this is no problemo, of course. So, in the next part we will uh, set up some, some lights inside of this building and also I think we need to make this wall in general, not only on the edges, a little bit more dirty. So we will create maybe a little bit of a noise or something like that. And maybe with a blend material we can then bring in a little bit more, let's say, a little bit overall dirtiness on this, on this texture and then we will render again and then we'll see what kind of things we still need to change 
before we make our final rendering with all the multi-passes and then jumping into Photoshop and making it look absolutely great. So this was it for, for this part. I hope you learned a little bit something, of course. I mean, this is what this course should be about. And yeah, I catch